everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Kid Icarus Uprising. In the last episode, we stormed the Sea Palace and took down Thanatos, the God of Death. And in this episode, we're going to be heading out for more adventure. Where? Well, we'll find out in just a moment. Because before we're going to head out, we have the ultra secret awesome thing to start off this video with. Another extra secret in Kid Icarus Uprising. Well, this one's not really all that special. It's incredibly minor. I'm going to be showing the volume options for no reason other than just to say that I have turned down the sound effects and kept the music and voice high, because some of you have said that things such as the club sound effects or various melee attacks make it kind of hard to hear what the characters are saying, so I've turned down the voice three notches. Or, or, not the voice, I've turned down the sound effects three notches. Incredibly minor, but yeah, I figured that could be the extra thing for this video just because I've taken the time to do that. Uh, before we set out, though, I want to show my gear really quick. I'm going to be going into this with the Crusher Arm that I got last time. Now, I know that range 3 stars melee 0 isn't really all that special, and most would recommend just fusing that into something else, but I've yet to show the arms, and if I had to use any arm, it'd probably be Crusher, um, if anything. Uh, Crusher or uh, Volcano, actually, are probably the ones that I would get the most out of. If you're curious how arms work, um, it is actually uh, the third strongest weapon type in the game, surpassed only by the club and the cannon. Uh, it is really, really good at both melee and ranged combat. So, no matter what you like doing, an arm can do it. However, the problem with it is, is that your range doesn't go very far, and your melee attack speed is also really, really slow. So, this is kind of your jack-of-all-trades weapon, but it doesn't really specialize in anything. As we head out, we got Chapter 8 here, the Space Pirate Ship. Yeah, how did we get from a seafloor palace to a space pirate ship? Well, I guess both kind of have something to do with the ocean, but... Oh, well. As we're heading into this, I'd like to say that there is a lone intensity gate in this stage. What is it, you may ask? Thankfully for my sanity, it is only a 6. I'll take it. Let's do extra spicy. Move out! Let's go! Oh, this area is so pretty. You ain't seen nothing yet. With Medusa's commanders out of the way, we're getting to the Battle of Battles. But this isn't the way to the Underworld. Where are we going? I'm a little embarrassed to say. What is it? Remember the three sacred treasures you used against Medusa long ago? Of course. The Mirror Shield, Arrow of Light, and Wings of Pegasus. Right. I hid them in case of an emergency. You know, so they wouldn't get stolen. Well, that's using your noodle. Man, you are so smart. There. See, there's also this space pirate ship. Wait, what? You know, a pirate ship in space. Its crew travels the galactic sea, robbing the heavens of constellations. That's awesome. I mean, evil. But what does that have to do with the three sacred treasures? Well, I hid the three sacred treasures in the constellations. Uh oh. So the pirates stole the treasures along with the stars? And the underworld army has gotten wind of it. They're attacking the ship. Oh, great. Which brings us to today's mission. Raid the pirate ship and retrieve the three sacred treasures. I'm on it. And I'm going really fast. We're already late, so we have to hurry. Hold on. Indeed, we have to hurry. This area is so gorgeous, and you ain't seen nothing yet. That intro is just the tip of the iceberg. I am such a fan of this chapter, it's not even funny. And we're going to be getting into why right around here. Well, okay, maybe not quite as pretty as it gets, though, but still, this is pretty damn cool. I like all the smoke raising up there. Uh, these enemies right here, you want to attack the leader with the two antennas, and you'll be able to take the, out the entire group with just taking down a single enemy. They've grown more brittle with age, but they'll likely last a few more battles. You're not exactly inspiring confidence here. Well, maybe you don't even need them anymore. Don't be such a chicken. I'm no chicken. I can take Medusa with one arm tied behind my back. Listen to that swagger. You've toughened up nicely, Pit. Remember when you'd be like, I'm finished all the time? I still say that. A lot. Five times in this LP, thank you very much. Only, I think, one of which, no, two of which were actually on camera. The others were when I was going and doing other runs of things. But as we head out here, check it out. Constellations! You've it's such a cool artistic take on this, and it looks so gorgeous and pretty and gorgeous again. And I love it, and it's just... Ugh, I'm gushing about the art direction more than I did in Okami. It's just all so pretty, and it's just so imaginative, and... Uh, I just, I can't get enough of it. It's just amazing. The pirate ship should be around here somewhere. Where? Ah, uh, 
Uh, you move so freaking quickly here, and it just emphasizes how everything looks. Okay, I'll stop gushing about the graphics. Graphics are not the most important thing to me in a video game. I mean, I've gone over my stance on graphics before. I don't think I need to do it again. Let's just let not any enemies get in our way and head on over to that space pirate ship Prano because, oh boy, we are in for one heck of an intergalactic adventure. Let's do it. So, um, as many of you know, Kid Icarus was originally a sister series to Metroid. It is based on the, the uh, first two games were based on Metroid 1 and Metroid 2. Um, I'm sure it's common knowledge. However, we're going up to a space pirate ship. And what enemies are right next to it as we come up to it? Kamados! Yeah, I wonder what they're referencing! <laughs> I, I can't get enough of that. Just I, I like how there's little Metroid references here and there, though, but... Yeah, of all the enemies they could put next to a space pirate ship, they friggin' put Kamados there. And as we go around this really cool looking spaceship, and there's an Orn! Uh, 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 or no! Couldn't resist. Let's get around those monoliths. And as we dash around. Found one! Get ready to go in! Ow! I feel bad for Pit. Found an opening! Yeah, you just need to face plant into a moving spaceship at Mach 10 speed, and then have it explode right in said face that you planted into it with. Not that I'm complaining. Could you be a little gentler next time? Sorry about that. Are you okay? Well, at least he didn't take damage from that. I guess it's kind of what we can go out of this knowing. Uh, so! Going up here, new enemies, the Space Pirates. They are unique from Underworld troops, and they actually are quite a bit stronger as well. Uh, these give a lot of newcomers trouble because they fight very differently. I also feel like their AI is quite a bit smarter, and they also have much more capable weapons, as you would expect aliens to have. On top of that, in this the way that this room is shaped, if you don't have a very good weapon in terms of range, you aren't going to be able to shoot them from a distance. Right there, we got a dodge token, a new item we haven't seen before. That'll make it so that you auto-dodge most shots for a while. It's an incredibly useful weapon when you're going through here. I mean, there was a dodge that I didn't even do. Get ourselves a smart bomb if you go up here. So I think I will use that against you. Uh, wow. Fail. <laughs> wow. Um, smart bomb usage of the year, everyone. Uh, this is why I'm not good at Star Fox. I never actually use my bombs wisely. So, let's go over here, and as we hop up here with these jump pads, I believe if you have Sky Jump, you should be able to get through here pretty nicely. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, actually, speaking of Sky Jump, my powers, as you can see, I changed them around a little bit. I got Bumblebee equipped now. I kept Brief Invincibility, and of course I got Health Recovery Level 3. Why would I ever not have that? Uh, Bumblebee is great when you got lots of fire around here, and... Um, just up here, we got ourselves this bomb. If you fire at that instead of an enemy, it can actually blow up enemies for you. I believe it's also volatile towards you, though, so I wouldn't get too close to it when it's about to blow up. Of course, that kind of goes that saying. So, let's show the capabilities of said arm. As you see right there, I'm able to do quite a lot of damage to him, and it also seems to have the effect activate really quickly with my melee combos. So that's nice and all. Uh, got a grenade there, and we can just hit him, finish off this one with a single melee attack. I, I don't know, arms are very love it or hate it for me, and they are for most people, as I think they should be. I, I don't know, it's just, some arms I feel like work really well, but others I can't play for crap with, so it's just kind of my whole stance on that. Anyway, we got ourselves a donut right here. Not just any donut, though, a space donut that we plundered from pirates! Yeah, I don't know, okay. <laughs> Let's head down here. And if I'm not mistaken, we want to take out every enemy down here. I've been taking out every enemy in this room on purpose because they believe that they are guarding a treasure chest that will appear after we've taken them all out. I mean, they are pirates after all. They're supposed to have treasure. Perhaps uh, with a space pirate ship, you could actually make it to Raptor without needing to do all that unnecessary grand line sailing. I've been referencing that a lot, actually, this LP. I guess there's just a lot of things I'm noticing that are, I don't know, kind of out there. Oh, whoa, hey! Um, if you haven't noticed also... Not only were those things that I pointed out earlier, but we have that enemy rolling up into a ball and attacking us, and we have another one that has an arm cannon. Again, I wonder what they're referencing. As we head in here, we're getting into a really cool looking area. This is the generator room. What's that shining in the glass? That's where energy from the galactic sea is converted into propulsive power. 
long as the ship remains in the galactic sea, it can run indefinitely. So, I should destroy the shiny thing? You'd better not. The explosion would be enormous. Sounds hurting. <laughs> to my knowledge, you can't actually destroy this. Even though it appears to be made of glass, it's probably made of some kind of awesome space plexiglass with diamond encrusted sheen or something like that. I'm not sure, but whatever it is, I don't think you can actually break it. I've sat here and I've tried shooting it for a long time and it just seems to point right off. So, even though Pitt says that, hinting that you can destroy it, I don't think you can actually. Uh, I can throw my X-bomb over there because I don't think I need it for these enemies! Uh, space pirates! Freaking, uh. Like I said, they actually can be a little bit tough enemies. It's funny that I'm only playing on six and I'm actually this low on health. I didn't think I was going to have this much trouble, to be honest with you. Uh, we got ourselves a lift right here. And where is that going to take us? Up, of course. Hey! Come on. Come on! Okay, you dropped some space chocolate. I'm not sure. Hey, floor ice cream! Floor chocolate! I'm very happy about that. Okay, so moving forward. Uh, I remember this. So we got a Belunka right here. I don't believe there's any reason to defeat it. I think I might actually stay here and just shoot it for a while to see if it goes down. I mean, well, obviously it's going to go down, but I don't know actually if there's any purpose to this. Come on, you know you want to die. There we go. Good little Bolonka, and how are we not getting sucked out into space right here? I mean, this thing's moving like what, at like a gazillion miles an hour? Excuse me, a gazillion 402 miles per hour. How silly of me for not understanding these space pirates numbers. Over here we got that six intensity gate that I came here for. It's got just a simple treasure chest in it with a knuckle staff. Very eerily doesn't seem to have enemies. I'm not really sure why that is. It's also it wasn't a lift. So, bland intensity gate is bland. Then again, these are futuristic aliens who probably just think, don't really think highly of having complicated intensity Oh, I see. See what? This must be a storage vault for the stolen constellations. They've all been compressed for easy transport. And what about the three sacred treasures? Unfortunately, they don't seem to be here. I bet the pirate captain has them. I wonder if he's wearing them. Then it's more than just an emergency. It's a fashion emergency. Of course that's what you'd be concerned with. I could make a sexist joke, but I won't because I ain't that kind of guy. At least not on a serious level. So, as we go through here, she's saying that they put the stolen constellations here and the, you know, they're compressed. How do you compress stars? I mean, I thought they were pretty dang... I don't know. I thought they had a hell of a lot of matter. Just saying. I mean, it's like they're taking a bunch of little suns, or possibly even bigger suns. I mean, could you imagine if they actually took the Constellation of Ryan and had Beetlejuice in here? I couldn't imagine compressing that in here, especially making it cool enough to touch. I mean, you think that you would just kind of burst into flames if you got with anywhere within a few hundred light years of that? I don't know. Anyway, uh, well, actually, I think we're about 600 light years away from Beetlejuice, so that kind of is really, really dumb. Uh, got ourselves chocolate right there. We got a Scuttler Cannoneer there. And uh, we don't want to take that jump pad that spawned after we took out those enemies, actually. We want to head back here, and we just want to drop off here. Because if we go behind this star here, I keep saying here, we got ourselves the Zodiac Chamber of Chapter 8. Heading up here, we get a very, very weird-looking weapon, the Cancer Claws. So I guess it makes sense for the claws to be cancer. I mean, I can't really think of any better fit, but... It just always was a very weird looking weapon to me. Let's get rid of you. There really aren't that many underworld troops here. And it, it's kind of funny though, because you know, before you kind of don't really like it when you're coming up against underworld troops, but here it actually feels kind of nice whenever you have underworld troops, just because of how tough those space pirates are and how many more shots they take down. Not to mention how much damage they do and how they're outfitted for all these kinds of fighting and so many other things that I just need to say and for and not actually have a list. Uh, right here! Um, wow! Epic voice crack! This is Phil and Colin. Yeah, they really, really went there. Two of them together. Two worlds, one family! Yeah, they're just gonna launch, um, launch the bug enemy at you and you need to launch it back at, I believe it's Phil and the bug is Colin. So you just need to do that. Uh, I, oh, rare treasure fish! Um, on rare occasions, as the name implies, whenever there is a treasure fish in a level normally, it will be replaced by a rare treasure fish. Um, sometimes rare treasure fish have fixed spawn points, but it's obviously, well, rare. 
Uh, rare treasure fish will, instead of a power-up, will typically contain a weapon or a power that you don't have. At least I think it's a weapon or power you don't have. It might just be a weapon or a power, period, because I've had them contain uh, duplicates before. You want to make sure to kill this one while it's over solid ground, or else it'll fall out into space and you'll lose it forever. Right there I got a royal blade, which I think I already have, but I'm, I'm pleased with that. Um, I'm glad I got to talk about the rare treasure fish, because I haven't actually gotten to mention that yet. And... The rare treasure fish looks like it's kind of just carrying around a treasure chest as the other treasure fish do, but if you look at the artwork for both types of those fish, it's actually kind of gross how they're carrying that chest. I'm not really sure if I want it that much if those were actually a real thing. Or if I was pit for that matter, uh, kind of taking the reverse on it. Switch, huh? That's and it for the first like. time since Dark Lord Gal's well, castle, you got switches to open doors. Do. Yeah, hitting switches usually do open doors. Just saying. Uh, we got these doors that are going to spawn enemies at us. However, we can actually attack the doors and break them so that no new enemies can come through. And if you want to pick up some extra hearts, it's kind of a good idea to, you know. Whenever you have endless spawning enemies, you can grind them if you really, really want to. But personally, I'm just going to destroy these doors and kind of enjoy my few kills instead of all of them. Down. Come on. I like how they have, like, futuristic eye patches. <laughs> I never actually noticed that before. Like they have like little eye patches on them that look like all futuristic. It's just like in the future, why would you need like an eye patch like part of your face naturally? I mean, it's not like he's even wearing it. Uh, you want to hit both switches here. Uh, this middle chest contains some treasure. This other chest, however, not so much. It will drop a bunch of hearts if you can. Well, even if you don't get away from the fire, it'll still drop lots of hearts. Uh, whoa. Huh? Okay, uh, that one didn't fire at me. Usually it does, but it didn't that time, so I guess I got lucky. So, this other treasure chest is just kind of good for some hearts. Let's move forward once more. And, as you can see, this area is really, really friggin' big. You get a big heart if you head over to this little dead end. I wonder if they were planning to put some there or not. And, over here... Space Pirate Hawk Spring! It looks like somebody beat you to it. Hope there's room for one more. There's always room for one more. It's just like convention elevators. Uh, I like how Pitt loves Hot Springs so much that he will kill over it. He will kill someone to relax in that hot spring without some alien species. Oh, boogity! Boogity, boogity, boogity! Wow, I wasn't actually counting to sound like I was saying boogity, boogity, boogity. I just was saying boogity three times. Uh, Souffle right over there. It's gonna come up. Dang it, I missed it. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, he plunged face first into a sea of stars. Moving it like Mach 10,000 speed. That Zoufli is the greatest badass the world has ever known. So much for a weak enemy that just gives you a bunch of hearts. No, that doesn't mean that I wanted to do it too. I'm not a badass. Oh well, I'm still not as awesome as that Zoufli for doing that because, well, I landed feet first and not face first like he did. And that Clever Skull over there, many consider him the toughest enemy, but he's got a plunge down there as well to prove that he is as awesome as that Souffle. Seriously, mega respect I for that Souffle. I set up for you outside the ship. Thank you very much. I'm pretty limited in where I can put grind rails. Luckily, the Underworld Force has cleared out a lot of clutter. Where's this thing go? To the ship's control room. I think that's where we'll find the three sacred treasures. Good. I want my stuff back. Gotta claim our stuff back. First we take their hot springs, now we take our stuff back. What's next, you might say? Well, I kind of would have liked that Souffle, to be honest with you. So as we're going through here on this really, really long grind rail, we kind of get like one last really cool view of things. So we're gonna hop in here, and uh, one thing I've yet to mention is that... One thing I've yet to mention is that if enemies are of different factions, here we have the Space Pirate faction and the Underworld Army, they will actually fight each other, and they won't target you until you get involved in the fight as well. So if you just kind of want to hang back and camp for a good 35 minutes, they will eventually kill each other, or one side will win, but they'll be greatly weakened, and you can just kind of swoop in and pick them off. It's kind of a nice little thing that you can do. Um, it's not overly necessary to really sit here and do this, because I don't really find these enemies that tough if you know what you're doing. But it's just kind of nice that you can just sit back and kind of just watch them fight each other without you having to get involved in any way. Uh, their shots can go stray and hit you, though, so that's kind of the only downside to doing this. 
But aside from that, yeah, if you just let them weaken each other, you can take them out in just a few short hits. Oh, Belunka! 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 That sounds like a name of a girl when I say it really quickly, and I... I'm saying a lot of enemy names three times in this chapter. Let's just shoot you. Come on. There we go. You didn't get out the enemies. Got a Phil and a... Got a Phil and Colin right there. Or Colin and Phil. I'm not really sure what order the, the official name of the enemy is. Ah! Okay. Let's not have him poison us. Okay, take out Mono Eye. Get rid of you because you're annoying. And all that's left is you and me, buddy. Oh, what? That was weird. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, that over there with the Clubber Skull is actually where we're supposed to go. The Space Pirates will be shooting that Clubber Skull for quite some time. But uh, I don't want to go there. I want to head over this way. There are four switches here. I believe just one of them is the right one. Uh, let's try switch number one. Of course that spawns an enemy. Uh, it's going to be the very last switch I try, isn't it? Totally is. Okay, let's take you out. Uh, let's try this one next. Wow, I got to say, I like using arms to fight these guys. He, he didn't stand a chance. Let's try this one. Uh... Nothing? Okay. Let's try the last one. Okay. Maybe you do have to do all four of them, and it's not just find the right one. Got ourselves lightweight right there, and I believe that is our final treasure chest, and we can now just move on, and wow, they are still fighting that clever skull. Uh, do I want to get involved in this? Wow. Uh, I hope that they weakened it the whole time I was in there. Please have done so, because I'd really like an easy fight with a clever skull before going into the boss. Really, really enjoy that. All right, time to kill Steel. Okay, at least I can. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, at least he's poisoned, and he's been weakened by the space pirates already, so I can just swoop in and kill Steel from. Okay. No, I did not want to melee him. That's what I mean by stuff meleeing when you don't want it to all the time. I know I don't need to take him out, and I know that I can just rush through it, but dang it, I want the hearts. And I especially need hearts because of the intensities I'm going to be playing on, and the fact that I at least like to use the store once in a while. There we go. If you can take that thing out, you will get yourself a treasure chest. Another reason why I wanted to do it. Got throwing boost. Alright. Got a drink of the gods right here. I really wish I didn't have to use two of my health recovery's, but hey, I still got my brief invincibility and all these other powers, so let's go. I have no idea what he's saying. He's like, Yar, I'll make you walk the space plank, scurry dog. I love the look on Valentina's face. That's just a loose translation. Oh man, not the space plank. Oh. many teeth that thing had. A space kraken? Well, that came out of nowhere. What's it even doing here? The Galactic Sea is home to all sorts of nasty creatures. So it's not affiliated at all with the Underworld Army? Either way, you'd better do something about those tentacles. Understood. Although, when prepared correctly, octopus is actually quite delicious. Can we think about food at a time like this? We've got three tentacles to go. I certainly can. I freaking love this. So starting off this fight, you're just going to be fighting its tentacles to start off. I'm guessing that it's just kind of wrapped around the ship and just kind of has its tentacles up here while its head is on the bottom. Uh, once you've taken out four of its tentacles, that will end things here. They really aren't that hard to avoid. They actually are very haphazard with their attack, so I wouldn't really worry too much. And even if you do get hurt, as you see there, it didn't really do much damage to me when it did hit me. Uh, doing forward dash shots are usually how I do damage on them really quickly. If I may stop missing here. Okay. Come on, freaking range on this thing. I, I like arms okay, but jeez, their range is terrible and their attack speed is really, really slow. Like I said, wow, okay. Uh, let's, wow, that was it? Dang, okay, I'll stop complaining. Attacking from distance and getting in close both have their pros and cons. Try to find the range that works well with the weapon you're using now. 
got it. You can always trust an angel to find the best tool for a job. What I like to do personally is I like to cast up my brief invincibility and just get in its face and combo it so when it tries to um, just do that to me, I can't really get hurt by it. If you do that, you should have absolutely no problem at all. What a sucker. What a sucker. That was actually really easy. I was really happy to have a simple chapter for once. Hey, look! Check it out! The three sacred treasures must be inside. Hmm. The box is really held up well. It is less pixelated than I remember. Uh, I guess it makes sense. The weathering and erosion caused it to become higher and higher resolution over time, having finer and finer details as the weathering of technology takes its toll on it. Anyway, um, got Needle Palm, which eh, doesn't look that good. I've yet to use a palm yet, though, so maybe I'll use that soon. I uh, got a Knuckle Staff. That, wow, range four stars, shot, ho shot range plus three, on top of what a staff already has, and shot homing plus two? Dang. Um, okay. Uh, those Cancer Claws don't really look all that good. Then again, I was playing on 6 when I'm used to playing on like 8 and 9 lately. Uh, that Royal Blade from that Red Treasure Fish actually looks pretty nice. Pop Hat Orbiter's not a fan. Lightweight, increase movement speed and prevent tiring out in exchange for taking more damage when hit. Uh, speaking of that, actually, what's kind of a shame that I didn't get to show is that if I got a normal Treasure Fish instead of that Rare Treasure Fish... I would have been able to get like two power-ups at once, both of which we haven't seen yet, and both of which are really, really cool. So, I'll have to go into what those are later, but just trust me in this, they are really, really cool. Got ourselves a throwing boost, okay, I think that was, oh, super armor from the boss, of course, the last thing we got, and did I get achievements? Yes, I did! Cancer Zodiac Chamber, uh, Chapter 8, Defeat uh, 200 Enemies on Intensity 5, uh, Score of 180,000 or higher, and Clear Within 12 Minutes. Okay, wow, 12 minutes, short video. All right, so that does it for now. Next time on Kid Icarus Uprising, now that we have the three sacred treasures, we'll be going to the very climactic Chapter 9, Medusa's Final Battle. See you guys then.